Hello guys and girls, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. So I'm back testing SUVs, as you can probably see behind me over my left shoulder, I had to work out my left and my right then. I'm joined by the Kia Stonic, the new small SUV to come from the Korean brand. So let's have a look around, shall we? Now I must admit, when I first saw pictures of this car last year, I thought, wow, that car looks really bold, it looks really interesting but the more I see it, the more I'm not so sure. What do you guys think? Is it a looker? Is it a bit of a minger? Uh, let me know what you think, because I, you know, I've spent quite a few days uh, with this car already, and I simply cannot make up my mind. So the model tested here is the two model. Now there are three trim levels to choose from. You've got two, three, and four. If you're wondering why there's no one, it's because Kia has made the decision not to sell the one model in the UK, and that's based on customer demands, which makes perfect sense because there's no point building a car if no one is going to buy it. So that makes perfect sense. Now, this car starts from 16,000, 545 pounds however i've got the one liter engine which makes it a little bit more expensive and um, the base model normally comes with a 1.4 liter engine a petrol engine which is naturally aspirated whereas this engine is turbocharged and i've also got the graphite gray paintwork so this model sat here right uh, right here right now is at 17,000 uh, 745 pounds so in case you're wondering the graphite gray paint work that's a 545 pound option but apart from that everything else on this car comes as standard including the 17 inch alloys which look pretty handsome you also get roof rails as well now you can have this car in different colors of course and i'm pretty sure uh, if you get the model which has the two-tone roof there you can have it up to 20 color combinations i believe it is i personally think this car look, looks better in a bolder color in this graphite i do think it looks a little bit no i don't know i don't think this is uh, this is the best color to showcase this car's design but that's my opinion of course now let's step inside and i have to be honest oh it's locked let me unlock the car that might be a good idea there we are so this car doesn't have keyless entry because like i say it's the base model even though it's not really a base model is it because it's the two and not one but yeah you know let's not confuse uh, things so the inside is a nice enough place to be but i won't lie it is a bit bland let me jump in now yes you get dark gray touches here and you get a, a silver surround here kind of like a, a silver u-shape pardon me a silver um, u-shape design but it all feels a little bit plain jane in here um you'll have to excuse my other filming bits i'm filming another video today so yes i'm squeezing this video in for you guys um yeah the inside is a little bit plain and if you're looking for an suv which has a funky or um outgoing interior this may not be the car for you but this car does offer a fair amount of goodies so let me turn on the ignition like so there will be a few bongs but it will um stop in a minute there we go so as standard you get a seven inch touch screen oh i went to hit continue but i didn't need to uh let's go back to home so you get a seven inch touchscreen as standard, which works pretty well. It does look like it's black and white, but it, it is color, uh, believe me. So if I go in there, you can see a bit of color there, but, but yeah, it is, you know, it is color. It's not black and white. Like I say, it works pretty well. And what I find quite impressive as, as standard, even on the base model, you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So, you know, I'm a big fan of Android Auto. I've got an Android phone, uh, of course. Um, otherwise, it'd be pointless me being being a fan of Android Auto if I, if I had an Apple phone. But you get what I mean. I'm, you know, I, I'm a big fan of smartphone connectivity. And if I were buying a new car, that is one feature I would definitely want to have. It's also got Bluetooth, of course, but of course, um, you'd expect that. Oh yes, be quiet. Uh, and you've got DAB radio as well. You've also got air conditioning, cruise control, and speed limiter. And if I quickly 
pop it into reverse. I know the car's not actually running, but it should still work. There we go, you will see it's got rear parking sensors as well, plus it's got automatic lights. So it has got a fair amount of specification, but what about storage? Right, let me close my door like so. Oh, I've got to mention you also get front and rear electric windows, which seems like a given nowadays, but believe me, there are still cars out there which have rear electric windows as an option. So don't don't take it for granted, guys, because, because not every car has rear electric windows. Anyway, back onto storage. So the doorbin offers a decent amount of storage. Got my, my beaner in there. A little bit of space in there as well for a pack of mints or whatever you may want to put in there. Another decent cubby hole here where I normally put my smartphone. You've got a little, little shelf here, which you can't see because it's in the dark, but you can put one or two small smaller items there, but they may not stay on. Two cup holders in the middle. By the way, I'm not, I'm not, I ride, I ride, sorry, I can't get my words out. I'm not a Ribena addict. Um, my wife was in the car earlier, but she's gone back home. So that was her drink, which she, she has kindly left me behind. Glove box is a decent enough size, although most of it is taken up by quite a thick manual. Now, I made a similar comment when I drove the Honda Jazz a few weeks back. And uh, when I had the Jeep Compass, that also had a thick manuals. I don't know what it is. It's, modern cars seem to have manuals which are just so thick they're longer than some novels my word yeah quite thick indeed and you've also got a little storage compartment here which offers a decent amount of space so yeah there's quite a lot of cubby holes in the front so that's pretty good now in regards to getting a good driving position that's easy the steering wheel adjusts for rake and reach like so which i can't do with one hand there we go Oh, let me pop it back to where it should be. And my driver's seat has also got a good level of adjustment. Right, let's hop out so I can show you rear space. That is quite annoying. It keeps bonging until you take the key out, which I must admit does annoy me. Right, let's jump out like so. Now, as always, guys, the driver's seat has been altered for me. I'm six foot two, so I am, of course, a tall guy. And space back here is okay. It's not outstanding. So if you're a taller passenger like me, you may struggle a little bit. I have just about got enough leg room, but as you can see, guys, it's not much. It's quite marginal. So if you're a taller passenger, you'll probably want to shotgun the front passenger seat. Headroom, again, is okay, but not outstanding. I've got a little bit left over, but anyone taller than me would struggle. So, yeah, the back is okay, but not quite as good as other SUVs. Could you fit three adults back here? No, probably not. So two adults should be fine at a push, but of course you can fit um, smaller adults in here or children. Right, let's have a look at the boot. Oh, as I get out, let me just show you. You've also got little cubby holes in the back as well. It's quite handy. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Stonic is based on the Kia Rio hatchback. And because it's an SUV, you would expect its boot to be a fair amount larger. But to be honest, it isn't. As I say, I've got all of my filming gear today, so it gives you a good idea of, of how much you can fit in the boot, even though that is kind of like an organized chaos. I've just thrown my stuff in. Um, but yes, it's 352 liters, which isn't bad, although it's not class leading. However, it's only, a, it's only about 27 liters larger than uh, the Rio hatchback. So a part of me does think, well, why would you buy a Stonic when you're not really getting much more space? Uh, the, the rear space, as I showed you a few moments ago, isn't fantastic and it's about the same as the Rio. So in regards to interior space, it's not much bigger than uh, the Rio. Now if you need more space, you can of course fold down the 60-40 rear seats and by doing so, you'll have well over 1,100 litres. But yeah, I am a little bit disappointed that the boot isn't bigger and 
there's also a fair lip as well. So if you've got heavy bags, it may be a bit of a faff getting, getting them in and over this uh, rather pronounced lip. However, the boot is, you know, it should be enough for most people's needs. Right, let's finish by having a look at the engine and in doing so, I will of course need to lift up the bonnet. That'll be very helpful indeed. There we go, bonnet release down there. And this part is always fun, trying to open up a bonnet with one hand. There we are. Right, let me just use my other hand. So, what you are looking at guys is a three cylinder, one litre turbocharged petrol engine, which produces 118 brake horsepower with 171 newton meters of torque. It will hit 60 miles per hour. It's, um, so in case you're wondering, uh, Kia measure it at 60 rather than 62. So it will hit 60 miles per hour in 9.9 .9 seconds and continue to a top speed of 115 miles per hour. Now, in case you're wondering about fuel economy and CO2 and so forth, this car, well, this engine, I should say, offers up to 56.5 mpg on a combined run and CO2 emissions come in at 115 grams per kilometre. Now, if you don't want this engine, although I think this is definitely the best engine to have for a Stonic, you can have a 1.4 litre naturally aspirated petrol or you can have a 1.6 litre turbocharged diesel but this engine is bound to be the most popular and for good reason because it offers a good amount of performance and it won't really cost a fortune to run either. Right, let's pop the bonnet back down like so. Oh, it's caught. There we go, pop it back down like so. There we go. So there we are guys, the brand new Kia Stonic. What do you think, guys? Do you think it's a good looking car? Do you think it's going to be a successful car? Um, let me know your thoughts, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave me a comment. But I think that's enough talking from me in this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a massive thumbs up. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. And if you aren't subscribed, guys, what are you waiting for? Be sure to subscribe for more Car Obsession.